parties, at least a lot of them, are taking place in the Virgin Islands, which again, just makes you go, what's happening here? Because Jeffrey Epstein, obviously his home, or he owned an island uh, that was just off the coast of St. Thomas. So we hear that again. Candace Owens has been vocal about Sean Diddy Combs' recent allegations, which she considers bigger than the Jeffrey Epstein case. In her podcast, Owens highlighted key takeaways from the lawsuit, including allegations of FOs involving high-profile figures. She questions why the media remains silent on this case and suggests that both politicians and celebrities may be implicated. Candace Owens has raised allegations against Diddy, claiming that he is involved in a Hollywood mistreatment ring. Owens also alleged him of being homo and having relationships with male rappers in the industry. Despite these serious allegations, Diddy remains free due to his connections with celebrities and politicians. Owens has challenged him to name names and expose those operating within this alleged ring. Oh my gosh, where do we begin? All right, well, he's changed his name many times over the years. You might know him as Sean Combs, Puff Daddy, Puffy, Puff, P. Diddy, or just Diddy, the D, the I, the D, the D, the Y. Okay, well, there have always been rumors, and quite frankly, I always thought that they were conspiracies because they sounded crazy. First and foremost, rumors that he was gay. Also, rumors that he was behind the killing of his quote-unquote best friend, the notorious B.I.G., and also that he had something to do with the killing of Tupac. Well, last year, things got interesting because Combs's ex, her name was Cassandra, she went by Cassie, and she filed a federal lawsuit against him in New York alleging years of assaults. Now, again, they dated for like more than 10 years, so she obviously was very close to him and knew his lifestyle. Her lawsuit contained graphic allegations that he raped her in 2018, that he physically abused her, that he intimidated her, that he made her have sex with male escorts while he watched, the lawsuit also alleged that he blew up another artist's car, his name was Kid Cudi, in order to stop him from seeing Cassie rom romantically when him and Cassie split up. The second big explosive thing that came from this document are the allegations that Diddy hosts freak-offs, essentially sexual events to procure blackmail on other people in the industry. That They all come and they have these drug-fused parties with underage boys with underage girls and throughout this lawsuit he names multiple current rappers that have been involved in these parties and are therefore existing under blackmail right so if you if you can suddenly record somebody and they're hooking up with a person that is underage if you're doing drugs and diddy has cameras on it well then diddy owns you which leads me to think, what even is gangster rap? It's a question that I have been asking a lot. It, it seems to me that there is something intentional, that they are intentionally feeding us filth via the media. And I wonder if a lot of these artists are existing within this blackmail ring. And also, where have we heard this before? Ray J recently shared his thoughts on Diddy and Candace Owens. He criticized Diddy's recent actions, labeling them despicable. Additionally, Ray J acknowledged Candace Owens. The internet is abuzz with theories and discussions about powerful elites and their connections, with Diddy potentially being portrayed as a fall guy to conceal wrongdoing. You've been in the headlines lately. Right. Um, on TMZ because they stopped you and asked if what your feelings about Diddy are and if you're surprised that any of his friends haven't um, spoken up about him or come to his before, defense. I think that was before the video. I think yeah. the video was distasteful and unbelievable. And, you know, I think God forgives, but we don't forget. And there's no room for friendship and like to, for me to support or be around that kind of shit. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. That was horrible. And if I did see something like that, I would have definitely went went to her defense on that that's despicable yeah um and i think a lot of men might have been in those situations i think anybody that's done that to a woman has no right to even say it's despicable now like so if you're a guy and you've done some shit like that um just be quiet and like get your life together and go away and you know what i'm saying from the world that we're in i don't think you're invited anymore to any like space and time in this space finds find god you know but that's fucking unexcusable so one it happened a while ago but i wanted to ask if you were involved in giving candace owens um private voicemails that you had saved on your phone that she then used in her show when she came out against kim shout out to candace owens 
We're not getting any shout answers. Out to um, I, I don't remember. Shout out. You don't I don't remember, remember but I know, I, I know I flew. He doesn't give shout outs. I know. Jaguar Wright has been in the spotlight recently, making serious allegations against Jay Z. She claimed that Jay Z was involved in the killing of Big L, a popular New York rapper who was Jay Z's chief rival in music. She also mentioned that he has recorded her on footage doing wrong things forcefully, similar to what Diddy has done. Wright suggests that both Diddy and Jay Z are alike, labeling them as criminals who have committed many crimes. I'm saying Sean Carter remembers everything he did to me and he's got it on tape. Just like Diddy. <laughs> Isn't it gonna be crazy? It's gonna be the women that get them in the end. So you say that, um, that Jay- Fuck Jay-Z! And I think it's time for him to start speaking up about his very good friend. Just nine months ago, you were singing his praises. All that he's done for the culture. And how you gotta be crazy like Diddy to make it. Furthermore, she says that, just like Diddy, Jay-Z will also be exposed in front of the world. She claims to be working on it, and soon the world will be aware of Jay-Z's alleged crimes. How long you think before I have yours right here in mind? What, what would it take for Jay-Z to go down like Diddy did? I don't know, but I got an idea that Evan Rogers is going to help me figure that out. And who is Evan? Evan was the producer who only seemed to work on teeny bopper projects, who discovered Rihanna at 3 a.m. in the morning in a hotel room on the island where she comes from with no parental supervision. And then she was put on a private plane, a minor from one country to another without parental supervision. And she ended up in a boardroom with Mr. Carter. Roger Bonds, a former street figure and security guard for Diddy, has recently been in the spotlight. He claims to have witnessed Diddy physically mistreating women in front of him on different occasions. In a fiery video, he shared his version of the story, stating, I was sick of having to cover up everything that you did. I guess gotcha, yeah, yeah. You cemented your way in the life of Puff. What happened that night? And how did you really go from, okay, I'm holding Loon down and I'm, and, and I'm driving, doing whatever, to now... I'm, I'm side by side with Puff damn near every day. It, 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 it's funny, it's funny how that happened because like I told you, my man Nick was there. My man Nick is the one that brought me in. If you remember back then we had the studio at the same time. So we needed security at the studio. We needed security at 17 or well, 1440 at that time. 1440, we needed security everywhere. So my man always was like, he always would beat somebody up. You know what I'm saying? So. Puff said, yo, B, I can't have him with me no more. You know what I'm saying? He a good dude. I love him to death, but let's put him at the studio. And let's get the other one that we got at the studio with us. You know, your driver, Paul, your driver. You know what? I, I don't definitely, I don't want to agree with Candace Owens, but I think Candace Owens is definitely onto something. And we're not talking about the quantity of people because we know that Jeffrey Epstein had close to what, 60, 70, 80. And it, that's the ones that came forward. But we're talking about the quality. I think with this Diddy situation, you have a cross section between celebrities, politicians, rappers, church leaders, record executives, as well as corporate leaders. And it's just a stew. It's a big pot of mess that he shoots right. It hasn't gotten the media of attention. The only attention it's gotten is a lot of play on the blogs. And I think there is a reason for that because I think the people that will be exposed will erode who we actually look up to as our thought leaders in the black community. And people are scared. Armand, what do you think? 
I totally agree. I also feel like, you know, Candace Owens is actually right there too, because it's like, you know, there's also people trying alleging that, you know, he could be like murdering people or trying to kill people. Candace Owens recently addressed allegations surrounding Jay-Z and the scrutiny of his business practices. She emphasized the importance of examining the character and actions of influential figures, suggesting that Jay-Z's success should not overshadow his alleged involvement in unethical activities. Owens argued that society often overlooks or forgives the questionable behavior of celebrities, which she believes sets a dangerous precedent. I grew up listening to Jay-Z. I would say Jay-Z and Kanye probably had the biggest influence on me. And there's a lot in Jay-Z's music that I'm so grateful for because he made it clear on how to move in a business room, I would say. Yeah. But then he gets up on stage and he, him and his wife tell people to vote for Hillary Clinton. I know Jay-Z is smart enough to know that's wrong. I know he's smart enough to know that's wrong because I listened to the DNA of his music. So if you got out, why don't you tell other people how to get out? And that's when I lost respect for Jay-Z and it is what made me gain more respect for Kanye because he is willing to say stuff that makes him unfavorable in Hollywood where I think Jay-Z really cares about what Hollywood thinks about him. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Uncle Ron's discussion on the allegations involving Diddy and Jay-Z brings to light the darker aspects of their storied careers. He emphasizes that while both figures have undeniably shaped the music industry and achieved remarkable success, it is crucial to scrutinize the serious accusations that have surfaced over the years. Uncle Ron suggests that these allegations, if true, cast a shadow over their legacies and highlight the need for accountability, regardless of status. His perspective calls for a balanced view that recognizes both their contributions and the importance of addressing any potential wrongdoing. I was offered $30,000 to perform a hit on Biggie Smalls. March of 1997 I was approached by Diddy to perform a hit on one of his artists finding out that he wanted all the rights to all his catalogs I turned him down because I also found out that very night that Biggie had plans of leaving Bad Boy. Biggie should have never been in California to pr promote an album with a broken fibula bone who can barely walk to go to another studio when Diddy has his own studio in New York. Diddy is pure evil. He has a very nasty disposition. He treats everybody like crap. Every single employee he's ever had. He and his mother have looked down on them, belittled them, talked to them like they were the lowest scum on the earth. So he could always have his way. Amar, Muhammad, and Shug Knight, or Amir, they took the blame for something that was already getting ready to be in motion. It just happened at an earlier time because on the night Biggie was taken out and I'm so glad to this day that I refuse to do that so under investigations and working and cooperating with FBI my story is being told. There's so much more that we're going to talk about.
with Diddy. Beyonce's bodyguard Uncle Ron's revelations about Diddy and Jay-Z at Diddy's party bring forth serious allegations that have captured public attention. Uncle Ron claims to have witnessed questionable and potentially incriminating behavior involving both moguls, suggesting a darker side to their high-profile lifestyles. These allegations could significantly impact their reputations and the perception of their influence within the music industry. Uncle Ron's statements highlight the need for transparency and accountability, urging a deeper investigation into the actions of these powerful figures. This situation underscores the importance of holding even the most celebrated individuals to ethical standards. So, Beyonce's former bodyguard, Uncle Ron, has come out saying that he believes Beyonce and Jay-Z are evil, are responsible for the demise of other artists such as Kerry Hilson. He's saying Blue Ivy is not Jay-Z's child and Beyonce and Jay-Z would do anything to stay to the top, including worshipping other things. Also mentioned that P. Diddy offered him 30,000 to get rid of B.I.G. Do you believe Uncle Ron? This is some heavy stuff. What do you think about this power couple? Do you think it's all just an act and just a business agreement? Do you think that Beyonce is on drugs and is something more sinister going on? Let me know, don't be dead. The reported existence of a video taken by federal authorities at Diddy's party, allegedly involving Jay-Z and Beyonce, adds a complex layer to the ongoing scrutiny of these high-profile figures. This footage, purportedly capturing undisclosed activities, could have significant implications if it substantiates any allegations of misconduct. The involvement of federal agents suggests a serious investigation underscoring the gravity of the situation. As details unfold, the potential impact on Jay-Z and Beyonce Beyonce's public image and careers remains to be seen, highlighting the importance of transparency and accountability in navigating such high-stakes controversies. There's just been a shocking revelation from federal authorities regarding a highly private and scandalous video involving none other than Jay-Z and Beyonce, reportedly taken during a wild party hosted by Diddy. Apparently during a Homeland Security raid on Diddy's properties, some rather intriguing discoveries were made, including compromising footage featuring numerous beloved celebrities caught in scandalous situations. Speculation is rife that Diddy intentionally leaked this footage to authorities as a form of revenge against the Carters, allegedly due to their perceived lack of support during his legal battles. It seems he's on a mission to embarrass them at any cost, adding fuel to the fire and unsettling audio clip allegedly featuring Meek Mill and Diddy has surfaced courtesy of Diddy's former bodyguard. <laughs> Gene Deal's remarks draw a parallel between Jay-Z and Diddy, suggesting that both are implicated in similar allegations. However, Deal emphasizes that Diddy stands out as the primary figure in these controversies, indicating a higher level of involvement or frequency in the alleged activities. This perspective underscores the gravity of the accusations against Diddy compared to Jay-Z, painting a picture of a music industry where powerful figures are not immune to serious claims of misconduct. So now, Ja Puff is they on Jay. Uh, he said, Ja saying that if it wasn't for him, Jay wouldn't have been this, that, and the third. And then a nigga tried to play Ja on some, it was supposed to be on some tour shit that he tried to play Ja. And Ja had told Puff that he was going to go at him. But I think Herb Gotti probably had nip that in the bud because he probably seen what Puff was trying to do. Because after that, I never really heard Ja go at Jay-Z like he said he was when he was with Puff. So now, I said this title, Jay-Z and Diddy, are they two in the same? Gene Deal's commentary delves into the complex dynamics between Diddy and Jay-Z, suggesting that Diddy has directed Jihyu's attention towards Jay-Z amid ongoing allegations. Deal's insights hint at possible tensions and strategic maneuvers within their high-stakes world, 
where reputations and alliances can shift rapidly. By bringing Jahu into the equation, deal implies a deeper layer of intrigue and rivalry, possibly exacerbating the controversies surrounding both moguls. So now, Puff tried to use Ja Rule to go at Jay-Z. That was the reason why those girls and him were all in that room at that time. Everybody's saying a lot of things in the chat about Big L, man. Big L. Yo, Big L had the smoothest and the gangsterest flow. And the nigga wasn't, yo, Big L was a little dude. You know what I mean? Like, I think if he was five, six, five, seven, something like that, real slim. Diddy's recent comments addressing Jay-Z's infidelities add another dimension to their public personas and relationship. His remarks suggest a recognition of the human flaws behind the celebrity facade, possibly aiming to highlight shared experiences and vulnerabilities. So this just in, Diddy allegedly has evidence of Jay-Z unaliving his mistress, Kathy White. And the reason Diddy isn't in jail yet is because he's cooperating with authorities to take Jay down with him. Kathy White was Jay-Z's side piece. Kathy was an up-and-coming industry publicist, fitness, and beauty expert when she mysteriously died at 28. Jay-Z was seeing her on the down low and got her pregnant. So according to a journalist, Kathy was going to tell the tabloids everything for the right price, but Jay found out and got her murked. Diddy is allegedly set to release the details of how Jay-Z unalived his mistress. Jaguar Wright hints that both the Carters might be responsible, but one of them is more responsible than the other, and she wonders if it's possible Beyonce's temper is a little worse than most people think, and Jay had to clean it all up for her. That's it for today's video. Stay tuned until next time.